Phil fan, what's up? We have an absolutely phenomenal episode ahead of us today. I did want to pop on for a second and just give a quick disclaimer that although we don't go super deep into it, there are some mentions of sexual assault in this episode. So if you find that something that is triggering to you, you may want to skip this episode and catch us on the next one. I completely understand. But if you can stick around, this episode is invaluable, chock full of gems, and I'm excited for y'all to hear it. Enjoy the show. I, I remember I remember one time I dislocated my fingers. I dislocated my index finger, my middle finger, and my left hand. And it hurt. And I'm like, I I wanted to scratch. It hurt so bad, but I couldn't. Not, I couldn't step off the court. Like I, I had to. I just called a timeout real quick, popped my fingers back in place, taped them, and went straight back. Oh Same shit! You hurt with, core with Whew. ankles too. Sprained both my ankles. Kept playing. You know, there there was Ugh. no thought of how about you allow healing time. Mm. That that's not a that wasn't a concept that I fully understood. I may have like especially going into adulthood and more specifically dealing with that sexual assault. I did not heal, so in that I projected and I pushed things under the rug. I broke down and had very angered moments, lashing out. Hey, you feel that? You are now tuned in to you feel that with Bryce the Third. Yo, and welcome back to another episode of You Feel That? with Bryce the Third, the show where we aim to turn your I can'ts into I got this by providing you with tools and ways of looking at life that empower you emotionally and mentally, no matter what field you are in. I am accompanied today by a very special guest, Miss Stephanie Wallace. Hi. Um, can you remind me how we met? How did we meet? Oh, so we did a challenge together, launch your podcast challenge by David yeah, yeah, Sand. Yeah. Y'all might know him as Sleep is for Suckers or the Social Proof Podcast. Um, so we met in that challenge a couple months back and got into a group, accountability group, and decided to just hop on each other's um, podcast. So definitely happy to be here. Definitely in good company with Bryce the Third. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm glad you're here as well. And that kind of speaks to the energy of being open and being willing to make connections. Like you never know who can be able to show up for what or how you can be able to add value to who. Just being open and being willing to to reach out and 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 add mm -hmm. add energy to what other people got going on. You right, can build absolutely. connections unlike anything that you would ever expect for real. Right. So right. I, yeah. <laughs> So I know, um, I know, I know from being on your podcast. So, so I know from being on your podcast that uh, you, you're in health and wellness, and you know the the physical and spirituality. Uh, but in your words, tell us a little bit about yourself. Like, who is Stephanie Wallace? Oh gosh, that is a great question. I have asked myself this several times over the last maybe like few months. Um, Stephanie Wallace is. A dreamer. I dream so often. Um, I dream about, of course, health and wellness things. You know, people think that I'm, that's all I, that encompasses me, right? Um, what I do, what my hands do, tools, skills, things like that. But on a deeper level, I dream. I have big ambitions, big thoughts, big ideas. Um, I create, I um, manage i i do so many things but deep down i am just a person who feels deeply about her thoughts and i'm comfortable saying that i i used to be like oh i'm an exercise physiologist i'm this i'm that and it's like no that's what my hands do um but all day what stephanie is and what and what she leads with in the day is a dream so i like to call myself a dreamer these days a dreamer, a dreamer. I, yeah, I'm, I'm in good company. I'm in good company, like-minded company for real. So you you said you've asked yourself this question, who is Stephanie Wallace, uh, a few times within the past year or so. How has that process of personal development, understanding self, how, how has that been for you? Um, it's extremely challenging. I'll be honest. It, it's not like, oh, I had this epiphany and I woke up and I was like, I'm this new holistic individual. No, it was rough. It was a lot of shedding and um, 
letting go of not just we talk about labels people put labels on ourselves but then we adhere so much to those labels and we try to peel it off it's almost like I'm losing myself it's like no actually you're on a path to discovery almost so that journey for me I ended up quitting a lot of things and I've always been taught to not quit I grew up an athlete my dad was a coach for me um, for uh, several years. And so the idea of quitting something, anything is not accepted. It's not allowed. We're not quitters, mm. right? So when I started the, the question of who am I um, and not letting it be attached to something that I do or do well or any skill set, not even gifting, um, it was more just like, hey, who am I? You know, I end up quitting business. I stopped being this glorified health coach. I quit um, jobs. I think in the last maybe year, not even pandemic related jobs, like quitting jobs. It's just none of them fit. I was so uncomfortable and unhappy that I had to leave. I had to get out, even if it meant I had no income. And I was just on a pursuit of who am I and what, what am I doing in the world? Not even what I want to do for work. What am I doing in this world? What is my purpose? What is my role here? I can't just sit here and take up space. Um, so it was very painful. Um, very broke. <laughs> I'll say there were times where I was like, you know what? I ain't got it. And that's okay. Y'all will get your money. We just don't know when. It'll be a surprise to both of us. And, you know, everyone be fine. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it was, I'll say it was painful. It was a painful discovery, I, I, I'll say. I almost lost friendships because of it. Um, and now being on the other side, oh, breathing on the other side of pain is probably like one of the best feelings ever. Mm. Mm. So there's a couple of things in there that I want to pull out. The first okay. being... The catalyst, was there a specific catalyst that enticed you to begin this life change, begin searching for yourself in a manner of what you just described? Yes. Um, so it kind of started slow, like picking at me. This is maybe like 2018, I'll say. I was in a career. I was an exercise physiologist, world-renowned hospital, all of those things, right? Great for that age that I was at. And it just didn't feel good. I may have been achieving success, but I was so unhappy. And my pastor approached me and was like, hey, I have a job for you. I said, okay, well, what's the job? Um, he said, I need you to just come work for me and help me, you know, with the church and build it up, create systems and things like that, because I am skilled in creating a system. I can write an SOP, no problem. So um, I was like, okay, and this will, this was going to give me an opportunity to build my business up as a health coach and get more in the community, whatnot. So it just seemed like a really good opportunity, which it was. Definitely grateful for that that place. But even in the two years that I worked for my church, I experienced probably the most traumatic experiences that I've ever had dealing with church hurt, sexual assaults, relationship issues, so many different pain points right, to where it started to affect my job. So I spent more time being inside of myself than actually doing the job, which hurt the church in general as, as church organization, church business, everything. So mentally, I was just in a poor place. Emotionally, I was not well, I was angry. Um, I would show up at church, fank the funk, like just, hey, good morning, everybody, da, 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 da. But deep down inside, I'm just like, I just want everybody to stop talking to me. Got to the point where I was wearing sunglasses, hats. I wasn't getting dressed, no makeup, no eyebrows, nothing like that. I was like, not looking or feeling like myself, you know, um, looking real homely. So I um, woke up one day and I was just like, I don't feel good. I just really don't feel good. Then boom, the pandemic hit. And then I got to spend more time with myself in those thoughts. And I was just discovering a lot of pain, a lot of tears, um, spending time in my head in a good and a bad way, I guess. It was like a tug and pull. And then um, I told my boss what, what I was feeling, my boss pastor. I said, I need you to put your boss hat on and now I need you to put the pastor hat on. Um, and I ended up going on a leave of absence took care of my mental health. And then I quit that job two months later um, after some 
deep digging, tried to come back, wasn't a good fit anymore with where I was at. I needed to really spend some time exploring why me being such a high performance, high capacity person was breaking down and I could not Mm. function. I couldn't do, um, I may have had this high capacity to do things and being able to get on a stage and speak and speak well and engage the congregation, the audience, whoever I was speaking to uh, at that time. But at home, I'm in tears, curled up um, in a ball or looking forward to taking a shower because no one can hear me cry in a shower. Because then if you come out, of course, your eyes are red and there's water in your face because it's a shower. But no, that came from just like tears and just a fight within myself, you know? So uh, when I came to the conclusion that one, it's okay to feel, um, two, I give my, my, myself permission to stay in this moment versus having to sweep it under the rug. We're not quitters, we're not this, you know, get back on the court, get back on this, you know, whatever that I was taught. I was like, you know, I think I just wanna take a nap. I just wanna take a nap for like a month straight and just figure this out. So I did and that just led on to the question who am I, what am I supposed to be doing here on the earth? Because what I've been doing ain't it. Mm. And now I'm here still figuring it out, kind of. Mm. Or pursuing the the dream. Because there's a constant dream that I feel like God's given me that I'm like, I have yet to even engage in that. So now I feel like I'm engaging it and exploring it. It feels good. Mm. So, and then that leads to, I oh, did so much. So that leads to <laughs> the the question like do we ever arrive like do we ever get there right or is it about the journey and there's so much there because you spoke on being raised in a household where the the person never quits (laughs) where there's there's no throwing in the towel you know and then to to have that and and have that juxtaposed with you know, feeling like you're breaking down on the inside is this thing that I've discovered in my experience where we're putting on this mask of what it is that we're supposed to be that's on top of what it is that we are and learning how to really remove that mask or learning our relationship to that mask or just like the fish in water that doesn't know that there's water around, like no, learning that there is a mask and that's what this discomfort is. Oh, this mask isn't who I am. And mm-hmm. I can take this mask off and the process of taking the mask off, especially when we don't know we have a mask on can be painful because the mask is almost stuck to our face it's at a point. Stuck. It's like your, your skin, you know? Um, and yeah, it, it was, it was a lot. Cause you know, I was trained to uh, on the court. I, I remember, I remember one time I dislocated my fingers. I dislocated my index finger, my middle finger on my left hand and it hurt. And I'm like, I, I wanted to scroll. It hurt so bad, but I couldn't not, I couldn't step off the court. Like I, I had to, I just called a timeout real quick, popped my fingers back in place, taped them and went straight back. Oh, shit, you hurt with, core. With Whew. ankles too, sprained both my ankles, kept playing. You know, there, there was yeah. no thought of how about you allow healing time? Mm. That that's not a that wasn't a concept that I fully understood. I may have like especially going into adulthood and more specifically dealing with that sexual assault. I did not heal, so in that I projected and I pushed things under the rug. I broke down and had very angered moments, lashing out. Um, I even I even dated a guy for how long did we date for like three, four months? I didn't know I was his girlfriend, but he thought we were together. And I was just like, whoa, where where'd this come from? You know, so here I am change and my my struggles and my issues are changing other people's view and worlds. And he's thinking he's got a whole girlfriend. I'm like, I don't even like you. I'm just here mm. for company because I'm mm. hurting. You know, and I hurt this man, you know. Um I mean, I apologize. I wasn't just going to leave it at that, but, and we, we talked about it, but um, yeah, it, it was just like a, a series of you are not well, you did not allow your body to heal, especially somebody who knows the human body. I've studied the human body. I'm an exercise physiologist. You know, I, I know these things. You need healing time. It's represented in the, in the body. So why do I not practice that same principle in other areas of wellness? Um, and that's basically what 
the my podcast essentially is about is the laws, principles, and tactics that we use to treat, heal, strengthen, condition our bodies, why are they not always applied in our real world? Emotional health, financial health. We go to be on vacation. We got to recover from our financial uh, deficit that we put ourselves in. Same thing with emotional health. We got to recover. The same stimulus that brought us pain needs equal, maybe even more recovery time so that we can adapt. Um, mm. So, yeah, that mask had to come off. I had to fire my representative, the person sitting at my front <laughs> desk saying, oh, she's good. She's good. She'll be back. No, bring him in. I, I'm not okay. Mm. So I more time myself permission to understand that it is okay to not be okay sometimes. So, so what do you think about, so there's this phenomenon that I've, I've discovered where I thought I healed from something. Mm-hmm. And here it pops up again, like ah, I thought I healed from this shit. Like, what is what is this? It's a, yeah. it's again like, you know, when I, I've discovered that healing isn't linear, right? And right. there is there is a culture of like I can't move forward until I heal completely. Do yeah. you feel that we'll ever be completely healed, or is the 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 statement that I can't move forward until I heal completely? a form of procrastination from moving forward because maybe healing is uh, a continuous process. Um, I, I do believe it is continuous. Um, I think there, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a Jesus girl. I, I, I believe in, in Jesus, his healing powers and, you know, uh, walking as a healed person, it's a choice. You know, and a lot of the things that we deal with, go through, what like you can be healed or not, but you are a healed person. Um, and so, but it's your decision to operate there for the day. Um, mm. Or I can choose my victimhood. I can choose to walk around and be like, woe is me. I have this church hurt. I'm not going back to church until I'm okay. Well, how do I know if I don't go? <laughs> or how do I... Uh, like not test the waters, you know, but to be healed with something, you almost have to face it again. Mm. You've got to put yourself in situations to figure out, okay, is this, um, is this, is this okay? Is there a crack in the foundation? And the only way you know if there's a crack like in a pipe or something like that, right? You have to force water through it, raise the pressure up a little bit. That pressure reveals cracks. They're like, okay, so there's a crack there. Um, now I can repair it. Now I can see the area. Um, for example, uh, I after my sexual assault, I just did a stint of I'm not going out on dates, but I ended up dating somebody. I was like, maybe just test the waters to see if I'm okay. Wasn't the best option, but now in a healthy relationship, it still comes up. The the fear, the um, timidness. I don't touch me. Um, but I had to make the decision of, no, I'm a healed woman. I walk in forgiveness. I um, am no longer controlled by that event. That is an event that happened in my life. I am, I forgave him. I forgave myself. I am a healed woman. This is a safe place. You almost have to walk through some things, even being honest about, hey, I'm not okay with this or communicating like, I struggle in this area. If it's somebody that hurts you at the church, I'll, I'll talk about my experience. That's the only the insight that I have. You know, I had to go back to church. I had to go back. How could I be like, oh, the church hurt me, but I'm healed from it, but I can never step foot in the church again. Why? Mm. If you're healed from it, why would it bother you? You know, so I think there is that procrastination factor of I'm going to wait till I'm fully healed. But how how would I know if if my ankles were healed when I sprained them both if I didn't go back and play on them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I I don't know if I don't know if I would go right back on the court yeah. with two sprain like two broke ankles, no, and I don't know if I would just pop my digits back in place and go back out there. But yeah, definitely, I I uh I it's agree with you. I agree with you. <laughs> and I yeah. think I think you know, like you said, like you don't know where the cracks are until you put the pressure in there, right? right? So we don't really know. 
some things that there's some elements of our healing that we will not come across unless we are actually taking action to heal. It takes two. So there's the healing process and then there's the willingness to heal yeah. and to show up for the process. Yeah. And what I found is when I've had this, when I've experienced the phenomenon of, of damn, I thought I healed from this really in all, all actuality, like I needed this specific context, this specific mm -hmm. circumstance that I would never have been in had I not been outside, had I not left the crib, had I not went out into these, into the world and, 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 and moved in a way that I did. Like if I had never came up against the circumstance, I would have never had the context to come across like, Oh, like, here's a part that I, I didn't heal from yet, or right. here's a part of what it is that I thought I healed from that I, I haven't touched yet. Um, mm -hmm. So, but it, but it took for me to be outside for that to happen. So, it. like, it, it takes for us to get into the process for us to have that experience of, you know, the, 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 the multiple facets of healing. Mm -hmm. it, it's a, and that's why I say it's an ongoing thing because you're going to be faced with so many different situations, different types of people. Um, that as we grow, get older, new experiences, new things, new opportunities, present something. And you will be faced with the decision, the fork in the road. Am I going to operate as a healed person and know that I am good? I did the work to get here because you said the willingness to heal that that's, mm -hmm. you know, you got to embrace that, that work there. And then, or I could choose to just act out and, and then put the stamp on it. Well, I'm in the process of healing. I still, I'm st God is still working on me type of deal. Well, he working yeah. on all of us, but it's not to be used as an excuse. And I think there's a scripture. I, I, I wish I could find the reference in my mind, but Jesus, if I'm misquoting it, forgive me, but it talks about being aware um, of the people who say that they've arrived somewhere. Those, the people who said that they arrived mm -hmm. have no room to grow, have no room to learn. And those are people that you got to be watchful for because mm -hmm. that means they're not open. They're not remaining open to, to new levels, new opportunities, new learning things, uh, not willing to be coached and corrected. Yeah. So it's like, I haven't arrived at anything. And I thought I did. I thought mm -hmm. I knew everything. <laughs> I thought I arrived, you know, and then boom stuff was happening and I had no idea how to take care of it. And a lot of my friends were like, oh, Stephanie, you're so wise. We, mm -hmm. we go use wisdom. I'm like, what? Y'all, I've been foolish. I am one of the most foolish people I know. Um, I haven't arrived anywhere. You and, know? That's a sign, and that's a sign for me of a student of the game, for real. Like you, you're really plugged in as a student of life. Most people, like I, I I'm very weary when, when, people say I know a lot like eh, okay because I, I know because I know how unknown what I know is right like I know mm -hmm. how many times I've arrived to oh yeah I know that and then I'm shown like ah shit I don't know nothing you know so it's like how many how many of these experiences do I have to have before I come to the conclusion like oh like this is a continuous process and so yeah. even now when I share when I feel super sure of something it's like I'll let you know the asterisk this may change by the next time you talk to me you know right. this, this these views and opinions may change next time we talk a month from now you know because i'm a right. student of the game absolutely like there's um i uh, part of my uh, scripture i read this morning was just to remind me about what wisdom is and my friends would uh tell me you're you have wisdom and i said that's funny because i feel like i don't you know but um one of my favorite scriptures talks about what wisdom is and what wisdom is not and wisdom is always first pure it's the it's pure that it's first that it's true it's is it it's equal to something right so um if my initial response is not honest or if my initial plan and everything is not honest if it's self-seeking or if it's something lustful or um, anything like that then it can't be wisdom so if i'm seeking on this journey of my healing and watching my decision making and my desire is to be wise in all that I do, no matter what it is, then it has to be pure at first. It's like a check mark. And so in my, uh, my process, I've been having some checks and balances of like, okay, Steph, this is your first response. This is your, the emotion behind this situation. You're actually, you feel anger here. Explore that. Mm. 
you know, um, why be honest. Yes, I'm angry. I feel and I'm experiencing anger. Where is this coming from? Is it because of what they said? Um, can I state the problem or can I talk about the problem without actually saying what the problem is without getting angry? You know, like really exploring and asking myself questions I never asked myself before. And it turned out I'm really not bothered by much, but I was finding myself finding problems. Like I had a conversation a couple of days ago on whether I was going to go to a conference or not. And I was coming with every excuse in the book of why I do not want to go, or it could just stop it. I just don't want to. And I was explaining mm-hmm. to her, I was like, I have yet, I have yet to explore and experience what it's like to actually say, mm-hmm. I don't want to go because period. I just don't want to, but I was creating problems for myself all the time. I don't want to go because they're going to be there. I don't want to go because this makes me uncomfortable. I'm actually not uncomfortable. I just don't want to go. go. I just don't want to go. I have no, I I don't want to. I mean, that could change, but in this moment, Wednesday, was that June 8th? (laughs) You know, I, June, December, (laughs) December 8th. I don't, I don't know know what day it is, you know, (laughs) (laughs) that, that entrepreneur life. I don't know what day it is. I just know that it's raining. Um, but yeah, I don't want to, there's no why there is no why. And what I I hear, what, what I hear is what I hear is your process of learning how to develop a relationship with your intuition. And mm-hmm. I think especially when we're living on, off of the wheel of everybody else, you know, what everybody else told us life would be, mm-hmm. then we don't really have that relationship with that inner compass. But yeah. when we begin to live intentionally and we start to develop that relationship, like there's these circumstances, this context where it's like, OK, should I go to this conference or not? And then being intentional is like having that almost spiritual metal detector out. Like, like, why did why did I come up with like three excuses as to why I should or shouldn't go before I just came to the conclusion? Like, I, I don't want to go. And then, and then investigating that process to figure out like, oh, mm-hmm. like this is this is an indication that this is happening or mm-hmm. it, and this is my desired reality and this is what I want to happen. Yeah. And this is what, th- this is what I want to, this, I want it to be as simple as yes, I want to do it or no, I don't want to yeah. do it. It's clear. And, and I think what can, what can be a roadblock to even this process of development is that people feel like we got to have all the answers at once. And when we don't have all the answers at once, it can be very confusing. Like, but right. the whole thing is, I I found that I think it's impossible to ever have all the answers up front, even with the relationship that I've been building with my intuition mm-hmm. for years. Like, I still don't have all the answers. I'm a little bit more in tune with, OK, mm-hmm. when I have this gut feeling or when I think like this or when, like you said, it's a pure thought versus like a lustful thought or, you know, some of the other indications that this is coming from. Uh, a lower a lower self where it's like I want to be guided by my higher self how can us as teachers what would you suggest to somebody that is trying to figure out how to discover themselves but feel like they're overwhelmed because they feel that they need to have all the answers right now yeah no that that's a good question because that was something that I definitely struggled with um and now coming out of that still struggling a little bit but I've had, I had to cancel out a lot of noise and it's not even like, oh, go in a room, get quiet and listen. No, because what voice, whose voice is it? You might, it might sound like you, but I had, I had to pay attention to the language that I was using, but the vocabulary words, because I had a, a different mentors and um, different community settings to where even my thoughts had the same vocabulary words as them. So the things that I was listening to, I'm like, I couldn't tell if it was God, if it was me, the two mentors that I had, or if it was my pastor, if it was my friends, if it was my parents, um, boyfriend, I I didn't know who was speaking. So it's like, you can have a voice that's telling you to do something. And then when you do it, I'm like, this doesn't even feel good. That wasn't you. That was, that wasn't God, you know? And so for me, I had to, I fired everybody. Mm. <laughs> so I stopped communicating with mentors. Um, I stopped engaging in people's content um, on social media because sometimes you might find yourself like talking in a meme 
Like, you know, it's like that. I don't mm-hmm. use those words regularly. That's not my vocabulary. Right? Right, yeah. uh, you know, so I really had to silence everybody. I eat and I don't recommend doing this. I even stopped. I stopped praying for a little bit because I didn't know what I was praying on. I was just like, God, I, I have nothing to say because I don't want to just talk to you. Cause I do that. I, I, t- I do this thing where you start rationalizing your thoughts and emotions and you try to create the, this like word porn to make it sound good, make it memeable, mm. you know, mm. and to, and shareable, whatever, get someone to say, amen, you know, to it. I found myself doing that even in prayer. So there were moments where it would just be extremely silent in my room. My phone is off and I didn't talk to anybody about what was going on in my mind. It was quiet. Um, and it was so refreshing to just have my mind race and I was able to look at the race, like watching it on TV, isolating myself, having almost like an outer body experience and just watching my mind go. There was no pressure to tame it. There was no pressure to, oh, let me capture that one. That one looks crazy. That's a crazy, that let's identify it. Let's explore it. How do you feel about this stuff? How do... No, I just let it go. I embraced the way my mind was racing and I never did that before. It was always like, you need to quiet everything and all these other tools and tactics. But my uh, only desire for the year was like, I just want my mind to stop racing. I I want to be able to control it. And I was able to control it when I allowed it to do its thing. And (laughs) the brilliance that came with that was I discovered so many deep things about myself. I found my vocabulary words. I found the things that I like to think about, uh, my thoughts, my own personal opinions, my personal responses to things, um, to where now I feel justified with my seat at the table, not because I'm like-minded with everybody, but because my mind is mine. And I br- what, what I bring to it, not because yeah. I belong here because we agree on X, Y, Z. No, because I bring, you know, element OP to the table. Mm-hmm. I bring something different. Yeah. Um, that and embraced it. I let my mind go crazy. And that craziness was a beautiful thing. Um, yeah. And now that was probably um, the biggest thing. So just let it go. That's, that's huge. That's huge. And I'm actually listening to you. And if don't nobody else get nothing from this episode, yeah. like I'm getting a lot from it. Cause there's a lot that I relate to, but it's a lot that this is, what is the word? Um, substantiating because maybe I didn't have a language for my process as well. And it was almost like an emotional mental isolation where it's like, ah, I can't really, I can't really listen to everything right now because like, even right now in my life, like I've kind of stopped listening, not stopped listening. Cause I'm a musician. I'm an artist. I'm always got, I always got my antenna up, but I'm very selective about who it is that I listen to. Mm-hmm. And the the couple of teachers that I'm really tapped into, like that's that's on go all the time. But even I notice I can OD on them too. So it's like, ah, sometimes I just need silence. Mm-hmm. And that has allowed me to build this relationship with my inner wisdom that yeah. when I feel this way or when I think this way, it allows me to follow that guidance versus like, I don't even know whose voice that is or where it is that I'm going. Right. And even when it comes to dealing with like, so you, uh, I don't know if you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a mindfulness and meditation teacher and like teaching people who have never sat down in meditation before is kind of like what I specialize when I, when I put together my guidance. And one of the biggest things that I point out is that uh, uh, one of the barriers for sitting in meditation, uh, the biggest barriers that people will tell me is like, oh, well, I can't shut my mind off. And I'll, I'll answer to that. I'll answer. Oh, that's absolutely perfect. That's because great. the mind is not meant to shut off. Matter of fact, if you think the thought like I need to be shutting my mind off, like that's another thought on top of the thoughts that mm-hmm. you're trying to shut off. So the best thing we can do is allow the mind to be the mind. And sitting in mindfulness is not looking to shut the mind down. It's it's changing the relationship that we currently have with the mind mm-hmm. from a debilitating one to an empowering one. Mm-hmm. And from what you just shared that you used you used that tactic to figure out more of what it is that you are more, more of what it is that you appreciate and learn to speak your specific language. And I think that helps to build a relationship with ourselves where it's like, okay, whether I'm here or whether I'm not here, whether I go here, whether I decide to be here, it is because like I have a foundation, you know, Mm -hmm. I, I mess with me. 
you know, so I'm not coming to the table because everybody else is here, but I know what I can bring to this table. I know what I contribute. And if I decide not to sit at the table, it's nothing against you. It's just that I know who I am. I can listen to that voice and I can kind of draw that boundary that's needed. Oh yeah. It, it was, it was great too. And, and you, you touched on something too about having mentors and, and people that you have submitted yourself um, under their leadership and mentorship, which is, is important um, to grow. They can show you they're out there. If you may not be at the penthouse level just yet there, they got there. So they may have some insights that you can't see yet as you're looking out over what you're trying to do. So it's good to have, but then we're not meant to take that at, and and mirror it, you know. Mm-hmm. And I, that means I gotta be like her or him. Because mm-hmm. you're you. Because you. <laughs> I'm, I'm you're me, you. Yeah. You know. And and so when you are engaging in books, podcasts, uh, mentorship programs, um, like the there's this book I'm reading. It's called The Road Less Stupid. It's right here. It's it's so good. The first chapter is Who's just it about. By? It is by Keith J. Cunningham. The Road Less Stupid by Keith J. Cunningham. It's a business book mm. helping you um, develop in business. But I started to take on a principle that he was talking about, like some something that we probably don't think about. It's called He calls it a dumb tax. And it's like, how many times have you paid a dumb tax in your life because you didn't spend enough time thinking? Like 45 mm. minutes an hour just thinking on this thing. Like He was like, how much money would you have in your bank account if you actually thought about a financial decision? How many relationships would you still have or not have if you actually sat with it and thought about it? Like embracing the power of your mind so you can stop these dumb taxes around you. So he's just just like, sit with yourself and think. Ask yourself some questions. Answer the question. But before you write down and do like your little word, the word pouring thing that I do, um, I try to use fancy words and all these things make it sound good. Um, but I was like, dang, like, I'm really not as verbose as I thought I was. If I just, <laughs> I, was, I don't know that, I don't know that many words. Um, I just make them sound nice. Um, but yeah, when I started doing that, I was like, I'm avoiding a lot of dumb tax right now. And it feels good. Dumb tax in my relational health, physical health, um, relate every, everything pockets are fatter, you know, because I'm just making better decisions because I, Instead of running from my mind, I embraced it for what it is. It's supposed to think. It's supposed to engage in thought and ideas. And if I don't spend enough time there and allow it, I'm not going to know, like, I'm not going to know anything. I'm not going to understand myself or see where my brilliance truly is. And this year, actually, when I got to explore it, and realize I just because I have a master's degree in kinesiology means absolutely nothing because I was presented with the opportunity to help write and co-author a kinesiology book. And when I started doing that, I was like, man, I don't know a thing about <laughs> kinesiology, <laughs> you know, so I had to become a student again. Um, mm. But my credentials may have got me to that table. But when I asked, I was like, but I don't have a doctorate. I don't have all these things. Why am I here at this table? Because everybody else does. And it was more like, because you have a different kind of experience that the book needs, um, relationships with people, people and behaviors, your own. I'm like, oh, so it's something else that I have. My brain's yeah. thought yeah. contributes to this book, not the degree, because I understood yeah. a topic well and passed a test a couple of times. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, it's because of how my brain worked. Yeah, I think I think it works. I think it works uh, a two way street. It's about what we know, but then it's about who we are. Um, and mm-hmm. really and truly, like I think the street of who we are is a little bit wider, has a few more lanes, mm-hmm. because who you are specifically speaks to the impact that you can have because you are you. And like you're talking right. about uh, with the teachers and having multiple teachers, but not not being those teachers, being taking those teachings and using it to discover who it is that I am. And the beautiful thing about teachers and and mentors is that uh, like the dumb tax, we can pay fool's tax or we can buy we can we can borrow wisdom from people who bought it. And that's mm-hmm. the, that's the most beautiful thing about books. I think as the, I appreciate the medium of books. Uh, mm-hmm. and you can learn just as much from YouTube as you can from books. I'm not no super yeah. book dude, uh, but like a book 
is a medium that is as old as you know the 1800s 1700s yes. books from so i can go and borrow the wisdom from somebody who had lived yes. and died before i was thought of a thousand times and yeah. use that and apply it to my life in a way where it's like okay this is applicable in this moment and plus if yes. something resonates for me from the 1700s there has to be some truth there you know Man. so learning to find the truth and learning to yeah, dig into the hard. truth and come up and discover my own truth we don't have to reinvent the wheel you don't. There's there's a chapter that I always refer back to in my mind. It's in um, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. That mm -hmm, book was mm -hmm. written a long time ago, right? It was. But chapter nine, <laughs> chapter nine is about, um, he calls it sex transmutation. Sex transmutation. Wow, we about to get into it. Tell me what you know well, and what you feel. I'm pulling up my chair right now. In sex, what is this, Napoleon? Like, this is like oh, the books were in like 1930s, 20 something like yeah. that. I'm like, Napoleon, what are you talking about? Um, but I read that chapter in that time where I was like, I'm done with men, I don't want to date. So I had a lot of free time <laughs> on my hands. So I'm like, let me try to apply chapter nine. So, sex transmutation, he was basically talking about how sometimes the lust with sex and, and engaging in sexual activity is a major distraction and has mm. so much energy built up in there. It's, a, it's an energy exchange between two people. And so if you spend some time away from that, take that same energy that you're feeling and you would put there and put it into something else, watch success happen. And just and basically putting a harness on your sexual appetite mastering your physical self in the area of passion in the area of sex and and engaging in those things and so i was like all right so let me, let me be celibate for like nine months and see what happens so you so you did that man and that was the most successful that i've ever been in business this is when i was doing uh, my health coaching business i made a, i made a lot of money i had clients clients coming up to me i had to say no to people I was just like, oh my gosh, I'm never having sex again because <laughs> I have all the clients, right? So, it, but it was true that something that someone discovered years ago is true if you apply. The, there yeah. are principles in the universe, in the world, mm -hmm. that we engage in all the time. We just don't, we either take advantage of their power, like yeah. sex or like money positions um status platforms like you have a platform here with the podcast i have a platform we have so many people around us you have a platform and how you're leveraging it that energy there that you're putting into in that leverage makes a big difference that's it's physics it's a law of physics it's, it's yeah. a lot of energy. physical energy, energy. You know, energy it's doesn't, like, doesn't is you can't destroy energy like it, channeling it in different in different aspects. So I want to because I want to zoom in and we may use this, we may not, but like I, I want to get real specific with your experience with this because sexual transmutation was the chapter that when I first read Think and Grow Rich, like when I first read Think and Grow Rich, like eight years ago, like I was like, eh, I don't know what this is, and so I revisited it maybe like four or five times I revisited the book just specifically for that chapter. And then uh -huh. like, maybe like within my recent experience within the past year and a half, I've developed a, a new empowering relationship with, with physical intimacy. And so, but the question that I have, so for that nine months that you were celibate, was that celibate all sex or was there still like, like self, like sex with self? Was that still on the table? Oh no, this was nothing cold turkey nothing okay. nothing right. there was no i was even mindful of what i watched i was mindful of what the music i was listening to if if it was even mentioning like oh boy type of stuff nope yeah. <laughs> i didn't listen to even like because i love r&b i love when men sing and like R &B, I, I love it i cut that off yeah, too you know what, you know what we sing about you right, you know, um, <laughs> Will was crying for an hour, crying because her uh, the girl left for an hour, like th that type of stuff. Too. It's like, okay, yeah. you know, I, I shut it down. Um, yeah. because one, I needed to heal and, and to refocus my mind, too. And sex was something that was it, it made me gag, the thought of it mm. made me gag. It was like chewing on dirt. <laughs> Um, the idea mm. thought about it. And so in reading that book, I was like, you know what, maybe if I 
embraced that instead of trying to fix it. Mm. Uh, I don't need it right now. If if it's if it's, if it's feeling like this, then I don't need to have it in this moment. Now, Let me just this... focus, and then I transmit my energy somewhere else. Now, was this visceral reaction to sex? Was that attached to the trauma that you experienced? Most definitely, definitely attached to it. It was like even. I even stopped hugging people like mm. even at church and, and my position was I was the operations director. So I was heavily involved in all the areas of the church. So I knew everybody, everybody knew me and at church, you hug, you know, what's up, bro, mm -hmm. sis, you know, bless not leave favorite. Whoop, whoop. I avoided people just so I wouldn't hug them. There were some people who I still hugged and who people, the people who close to me who knew what was going on. Um, I would, they would embrace me and everything. We would talk. I, sometimes I would just break down crying. Um, I have one friend, her hugs are life changing. She will just shower the love of Jesus in every hug, you know? So she's, she's amazing for that, but it was definitely related to that. And I noticed those things changing about me and I had to sit with that, embrace it. I was okay. I'm not going to date. I'm not going to engage in it because it's not in a healthy way right now. Mm. Um, it's detrimental. It's I'm going to hurt someone or I'm going to end up being tied to this person because what comes from having sexual relationships, a mm -hmm. child or other things, right? Mm -hmm. That I'm not ready for. I'm not even in a full on relationship with you. I mean, he thought we were poor guy, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so it was related to that. And after reading that chapter again, I said, you know, maybe I'll take this energy so I still had the desire to have sex, which is odd. I had the desire, but if I would come close to or even thinking about it, I would like get sick and gag and just like shrivel up and just become numb. I was like, okay, so, so this, that's this, odd. This, <laughs> this process, and I know we talked a little bit earlier about like your process of healing and you've kind of sporadically throughout this episode kind of, you know, just just touched on the, the things that you've done to, to heal and and transmutation like that helped. That was an, an added addition to, towards your healing. Yeah. Oh, most definitely. It was a redirection of energy because you have energy. Like when people say, oh, I have no energy. No, you have it. It's just misdirected. You're not it's maybe, not in the right or maybe we or maybe we are energy. Ooh, and it's just remembering the fact that we are energy That's and good. tuning into like, like turning the radio station towards like what already exists. Yeah, the I don't volume. Know. No, that's good because that brings me to you do have energy because your heart beats with its own electricity and there's no real stimulus mm -hmm. for it. So, I mean, hey, mm -hmm. we, we are a, an energy container. Um, yeah. And so I mine was just misdirected. It was flowing towards something that I was trying to fix within myself. Okay, I was sexually assaulted. Let me see if I'm healed from that by engaging in sexual activity. Mm. That kind of trauma and then engaging in the same act that the trauma is about, um, oh, that's not the right way, um, you know? And, and maybe eventually I'll get to that point where it's okay to engage in it. But I'm like, no, I don't even love this person. I don't even like them. I don't want to be near them. But I'm thinking about, let me test the waters, you know, like, no, I'd rather mm. test the waters with somebody I'm in love with. And I get to that moment. But um, yeah, so I was like, hey, let me just take this energy that I'm feeling. I still have the desire. So my desire, which I'm thankful, was not touched. There was no robbing. All the traumatic experiences that I I felt, and this was something that I had to really acknowledge, you know, when I told about creating excuses as to why I don't want to do nothing or this happened to me and all these different things that we say. I was like, actually, I have so much desire. I have a fire still in here. Mm. Let me just fan it towards a different way. Mm. Taking the energy that I was feeling, the desire to have sex, but I, I knew how I was reacting physically to it. Let me just redirect it towards business and building up this over here or reading more or focusing my energy in the current relationship that I, that I had started engaging with my friends more and just having social things, family, you know, and it was really, really great. I had more money. I was excited. Um, I was speaking more, but from a different place, you know, mm -hmm. it was not like I prepared and oh, I can talk about this stuff all day. It came from somewhere different. 
And I was like, yeah. oh, I never spoke from there before. Yeah, and I definitely want to point out to everybody listening, like, if you hear Stephanie kind of detail this experience, like, from my viewpoint, all of it was necessary. Like, every piece of this experience was necessary. Yeah. The, 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 the experience that you had that you had no control over and then taking from that experience and then maybe seeking to quell the things that are going on within yourself or fix it with some more of the same thing like in, in this process of figuring out like what will work best for you that right. had led ultimately to where you are now and i kind of want to touch on that a bit to where you're at now and i don't want to hold you all day oh but, no you're good um, i got all day <laughs> so so where you're at now so um are you are you in a relationship now i am um the first the first relationship I got into after that whole process, I still am in. Um, okay. And we, he knows everything. And he's extremely observant to where he allows me to be. And, and that aspect is definitely a, a struggle of mine is just to be because I was so focused on doing and, you know, task and skill sets, whatever. He just allows me to be in this space. Whether um, I'm upset, angry, he allows me the space to talk about it or not talk about it. Um, he, you know, so it's definitely a great, healthy, we have our issues, we have our problems, we get mad, angry, whatever. Um, but because the communication is our priority, like, okay, we gonna handle this in real time. Why, like, what what's bothering you? Or he'll leave, come back, end of the day, we don't go to bed not dealing with stuff because for me, I'll carry it and I'll bring it up later. Mm -hmm. Remember when two months ago you didn't <laughs> me, call me delusional? He's like, what? <laughs> you know, that's not a good thing to practice. And so now I am putting into practice all of the things that I did with myself during that healing time, during that alone time here in this relationship to where I'm basically free to just be however I want to be. Okay. Okay. All right. And then, so I, this, this one's a, a personal question for, mm -hmm. for me, for sure. I guess one of the biggest, the biggest aspects of my journey is learning how to be on this journey of personal development. So like we were talking about the wisdom or, or getting to a place of arriving. Right. And the whole thing with relationship, a lot of times it's like, Oh, I'm attracted to, to you, who you are. Like I'm, when, you know, the classic version of love. Like I love you is like, I love you because of your curly hair and your eyes are this way. And, and because you're, you work here and you do this. Mm -hmm. But what I've learned is that in each season of life, there's growth and development. Yeah. So one day that hair might be cut off because you decide to cut the hair off. Or maybe one day, you know, the, mm -hmm. the job might, might change. So it's like the classic version of love is like, oh, I fell in love with this and you're not the same person. Yeah. But I think to really, to really show up for somebody is to show up uh, with the understanding that this person may change and that this person not, no, not even may change impermanence is like one of the promises. Like this person will change. This person yes. will seek and grow and develop. Mm -hmm. Some of us have this process of growth and development have subscribed to this process a little bit more than others. Yeah. So how do you, how do you manage, like, is your partner somebody who is on the same plane of growth and development as you are? Or do you feel that you grow a little bit rapidly, uh, more rapidly so than, than your partner does? And is that something that you manage? And how do you manage that? Um, we we're different in um, rates and um, it's methods as well, too. So he's he likes to handle things internally and he'll express it um, his afterthought. Some, sometimes he will engage in in the current of whatever he's dealing with. But he's uh, the things that he's been through in his life, he has developed a, a mental, I'll say fitness. Because with strength, it's just like, you know, but with fitness, it's like you're, it's dynamic. There's mm -hmm. lower like vibrational strength. There's a higher where you really have to max out. So his mental fitness helps grow mine. And then where the areas where I'm 
more um, ahead, I guess, helps him in the areas where he's a little bit behind. So it's kind of like this, we help each other in and complement the, the strengths and weaknesses of each other. Um, we, I mean, he, he doesn't like to read books. <laughs> I love reading books, you know, so we engage in different methodologies, but we are open to the other person changing. Cause we, we've had this conversation multiple times. Like I think there was a certain celebrity, I forgot who it was, but they recently departed and separated from their partner after like 21 years of marriage. And we saw that and we were both like, how does one after 21 years just decide hey, it's not working out. Let's get a divorce. There's no adultery. There's no betrayals of any sort that, you know, of course we're not aware of, but their message was uh, irreconcilable differences. And sometimes that can mean one out of the two grew and changed and the other one could not get on board. And so it caused problems. You're no, you're no longer the same person that I once knew. And so he and I, uh, my boyfriend, we talked about it and I said, okay, so we plan on being together for the long haul, marriage, kid, you know, having our family and growing old together. If I, I asked him, if I came to you 21 years from now and said, hey, these are the things that I'm feeling, all of that, what are you going to say? He was just like, all right, cool. <laughs> That's awesome. He was, you know, so I'm like, I, I hope you do change. I hope you do grow. I hope that you do learn and that's a bar. I like I I hope that you do. I hope you change. Why would you want to stay the exact same? Those are people mm. who have arrived, those are people who I'm supposed to be aware of and watchful for. I have yet to arrive. I have no idea <laughs> the person I'm going to yeah. be in 20 21 years from now. I could be the bomb. I could be better than 21 years prior. Yeah, I you bet know? you will. I bet you will. So it's like, I hope you do change. And I then change. on the other side, I hope you accept me and grow with me and adapt with me. So yeah. I think that that bumping of the heads is because someone decided to grow and change and improve on themselves and the other one could not accept it. There was resistance mm. there. Therefore, we split because of irreconcilable differences. We're mm. no longer on the same path we don't have to, to have the same methodologies but if our where we want to go is the same and you want to take the elevator while i'll take the stairs um okay um maybe we'll switch off i'll hop on the elevator you hop on the stairs but we're going yeah, up and and, and uh, the foundation of because we have to both have a foundation like mm -hmm. i at least for me like i, I i'm 100 percent whole period like, I don't need, there's nothing I need to complete me. There's nobody I need to complete me. But when I come and I'm an addition to something else, like I, I'm coming as a whole person and yeah. that person has to be a whole person because that's just one of those boundaries that I, I have mm -hmm. to set. Like if you're a half of a person thinking that you're getting your, your validation from, yeah. from being with me, like this, that's not going to work. Cause now we're like a buck 50, we're 150% where we need to be 200% because 100 is you and 100 is me. Mm -hmm. And when we come to the table in that manner, I feel that it, it offers uh, the ability to have understanding and compassion for each other because say you change and nobody has a monopoly on what's right or wrong. Right. So you change and you change in a way that doesn't, doesn't necessarily agree with my trajectory or where it is that I want to go. It's not like, Oh, you've changed and I got to go, but it's more so like, Oh, like I'm a hundred percent. You're a hundred percent this is a boundary I have to draw and this is the direction right. that you want to want to head in. I support you hundred yeah. percent. I love you. I care for you. And, and yeah, let's, let's move forward. Like we need to, even if it's yeah. without each other and like no love yeah. lost or as a matter of fact, that's, I think it takes more. I think it takes a, an investment in a way of love as a practice to allow somebody's growth to take them away from me physically due mm -hmm. to love like i love you i love you to the extent of allowing you to be whoever it is that you say that you exactly. need to be in this moment even oh, yeah. if especially if it's not with me right i've definitely been there in, in those moments and what's crazy about this relationship we dated before we dated years before but we were different people and so when we got together mm. this time around we were like you're different but i i, mm. I love this version of you like you you've changed you've grown you're yeah, not the dope. same you know, and so it was just like, because some people are like, oh, don't date backwards. Like, no, actually, he was dope then, but now he's just like dreamy. <laughs> you know, it's, it's <laughs> you know, it's, it's it, it feels good. So it's like 
So if he was able to be that and in that year, mm. and then he grew into this, I'm excited for another 10 years what he's going right, to Right, yeah, the next couple you know? seasons, yeah. And I think, like, that don't date backwards thing, uh, I think that can come from people not changing. Uh, yeah. The people who feel like if I'm dating backwards, because that's another thing, too. Like, sometimes I run into people that I knew, and they'll proceed to address me like who I was, and it makes me uncomfortable because I'm completely different. Okay, and and right they don't know how to handle me addressing them <laughs> as they show up as because they're used to people – addressing them as they've always been right right because so it's that's that's an interesting thing that you were able yeah. to go and, and pick and pick that back up but where most people would think are oh, we picked up where we left off no we're two totally different people no, and we're I'm coming to the girl. table as two to totally different people with the openness mm -hmm. to allow for our differences to be expressed in this moment yeah. and in this vehicle that's yeah. that's wonderful that's beautiful and and inspiring and i'm i'm, I'm glad you shared that with us mm -hmm. cool. so like i said i don't want to hold you all day we've we've been on we've been on a call for for a grip i could probably we could be on a call for another hour okay. if i if i let it go on <laughs> but right. so um what what's next for stephanie what's next for stephanie what's what's oh. next on the menu speaking of menus so i started a a brand that is um it's about what I like. So part of that journey, I literally wrote down what, what do I actually like? It was like so silly down to like, I like the color green, but I was really saying orange. Why was I lying? You know, it was, it was a list like that. On that list was, I actually prefer tea over coffee. So I was like, let me just explore tea. So I have been blending teas and coming up with like mm. a feel good tea brand. And so that's coming in the next couple of months, um, my tea brand. And it's just all about whatever vibe you own, there's a tea for, you know. So um, definitely look out for that. Be launching it in a couple months. Um, also, with my podcast, um, it is called the Buff, Gifted, and Naked Podcast. The three things that I have encompassed in my life with health and wellness, being physically fit, all the buff things, developing strength embracing my gifting the crazy mind that i have it is my gift um, and i've embraced it and then naked just living in transparency and honesty and leading with that because like i said wisdom is first pure and so uh, leading with um, that nakedness that podcast is being released in, uh, this month on christmas day episode one drops christmas day you heard it nice. here um so definitely look out for the buff gifted and naked podcast coming soon to a hood near you Nice, nice. And depending on when this when we drop this episode, I will have that linked in the show notes wherever you are listening to this podcast or watching this podcast. That's what's up. I'm excited. And uh, uh, Bryce, you had you had Bryce the third over there, didn't you? Sure did. There's an interview there. So you'll definitely be checking out his interview where I ask him the questions. Um, so you'll check that out. Uh, yeah, he's he's definitely in the rotation, y'all. <laughs> let's go. Let's go. All right. So. Before we get out of here, what would you tell someone who just felt like they couldn't do it? Like they're overwhelmed, dealing with big emotions, and maybe almost in a state of paralysis. What mm -hmm. what advice or suggestions would you give somebody that that's their experience to, to get on track? Yeah. Um, I would tell them to go move something. Um, movement is a spiritual thing. Not a lot of people think this way. And if you go to, um, I believe it's the Wailing Wall in Jerusalem, and you see people at the Wailing Wall praying, they are swaying back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, because they believe that um, movement in uh, any type of emotional turmoil, mental turmoil, when you're praying, when you're in those deep medit meditation mo moments, movement reminds them that God was with them during all the times. God represented himself in a cloud, represented in fire, but he was moving with his people all the time. And so moving in your turmoil reminds you that things are flowing. You're always in a constant mm. state of flow. You are not paralyzed. So move if you feel paralyzed. This could be exercise. This could be decluttering the house. This could be something unrelated to whatever is listed on your task list. Don't even touch that, but just go move something. Get into a state of flow and then you'll realize, okay, I'm not paralyzed. Your mind will be like, oh, I'm not paralyzed, I'm moving. 
And then that changes the thought pattern into something different. What else uh, is going to pop up in my mind? Embrace the next thought that happens after you correct that I'm not paralyzed because I'm in movement. Mm. Let me see what happens next. Um, exercise and, and movement and just engaging the physical body in that kind of flow is a game changer. So if you're not a mover, I'm not telling you go be a bodybuilder. I'm not saying you gotta go get flat abs and a fat ass. Don't do that. I mean, you can go buy them if that's what you want, <laughs> but um, move yourself in some way and your mm. body will say, I am not paralyzed. And your mind Jeez. has no choice but to follow suit because you like just negated that. what it just said to you. I like so that. Move. I like that a lot. As a matter of fact, uh, it's, it's giving language to what I've been doing. Re recently, I, I get out to bed, I, I drink my water. And then I jump rope and the whole thing about movement is like before, like I can be in a depressive mood or I can be in a low state and it's like, I don't feel like moving. I don't want to move. I know it's going to make me feel better, quote unquote. I know it's going to make me feel better when I move, but I just don't have it in me. I just don't have the energy to when I push past that and just do it. Like after it's done, it's like, oh, this is what it feels like. <laughs> mm -hmm. This is this what it is feels nice. like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, yeah, I, I definitely I definitely can co-sign that. I definitely can co-sign that. Okay, so uh, leave us out with where we can find you. Where can we follow up with you? Yeah, um, of course. So you can follow up with me on Instagram. I'm on Instagram the most. Um, so you can follow up with me at Stephanie Marie Health. So it is my name, Stephanie, Marie, middle name, and the word health on Instagram. Nice, nice, nice. Well, we definitely appreciate you being on You Feel That. And Love it. This, is, this has been an invaluable episode. I know people are going to get a lot out of it. And, yeah, thanks for coming. Of course. Thanks for having me. All right, so before we get out of here, head over to Apple Podcasts and leave a rating and review. Y'all know that I love the ratings and reviews, not because it really does anything. Like, I've looked up, like, how it helps with the algorithm, and I'm not really sure. I never got a sure answer. But I know for sure as a podcast listener, when I go to a podcast and I go down to the ratings and reviews and I see people leaving paragraphs as to how this podcast has touched them, that is the deciding factor for whether I'm listening to this podcast episode or not. So if you could, it would mean the world to me if this podcast episode episode or any of the episodes you feel that has done anything for you and added something to your life and giving you tools to head over to apple Podcasts and leave me a written review that would be wonderful also y'all know me i'll just be putting it together for real i'll be making it happen however i need to make it happen so just look in the show notes of this podcast episode and you can click on that link and that'll either take you to the free chapter on gratitude that you could download in exchange for your email address or it'll take you to the link to buy the book and if you're in a if you're in a time and space where you could just buy the book buy the book it's gonna change your life it's life changing to help you to create your desired reality and we could all use a little bit more to help us to do that also share this podcast with five people y'all know here on youtube feel that we are very organic a lot of people who say they heard the podcast say they heard the podcast because a friend told them about the podcast and a friend that told them about the podcast had a friend that told them about the podcast we move in an organic ways so if you have five friends that you feel could benefit from this podcast episode with stephanie wallace the stephanie wallace please recommend to five people that would like to listen to this podcast and follow me on social media at bryce the third on instagram and tiktok where i'm most active right now and at you feel that podcast to keep in contact see all the new updates and see all that's going on so thank you all for tapping in with bryce the third and you feel that i'll catch you next time